In the time it takes you to listen to this ad, almost three million gallons of water will have flowed over the deck at Niagara Falls. And when that deck needs to be protected from all that water, it's sealed with America's recognized brand in water protection, Thompson's Water Seal. Oh look, another 100,000 gallons. Weather protected, water sealed. Thompson's Water Seal, trust the seal. Available at a retailer near you. Hey Chicago, spring is almost here and now's the perfect time to get a healthy, pest-controlled lawn with your local experts at True Green, America's number one lawn care company. True Green's science-based approach will help your lawn be thick and weed-free guaranteed. Go to truegreen.com slash radio to save 50% on your first service. Just call 866-967-6048 or go to truegreen.com slash radio today and get a lawn to be proud of. Again, Chad out today, uh, taking care of Q, who suffered a seizure last night and fell down, and we have given our best thoughts to both Chad and Q today. 651-461-9226. Paul Douglas coming up next. But uh, we failed. We failed. Not just the U.S., but I think the world uh, when it comes to dealing with the pandemic. Uh, we're coming up on two years. You probably, this time of year brings you right back, you know, starting to warm up. But we're hit with this pandemic. Things shut down. And there's a lot of uncertainty. And a lot of, remember, uh, everybody came out with ads and we're, we're all in this together. Remember, we're all in this together. Stay six feet apart. Wash your hands. Put on a mask. We're all in this together. We weren't in it together. Uh, quickly on, we became convinced that this was more about government control than about public safety. At least a part of the population did. And again, this isn't exclusive to the United States. These protests, these arguments went on all across the world. Uh, We dismissed doctors and epidemiologists who devoted their entire lives to a scenario like this. But we just dismiss them as political hacks. Ah, They're they're political hacks. They're bought and paid for. Uh, We had and still have leaders who would rather use the pandemic as an opportunity to fire up their bases and get votes than to actually tell them the hard truth about what is happening and about convincing them they need to sacrifice for a greater good. Sacrifice for a greater good. We failed at that. And for all the the good that can come out of something like this, silver linings we always cling to, lifestyle changes that that might be uh, carried over into, quote, quote, our new normal. That's my takeaway from the pandemic. It it was failure. Close to a million people died in the United States due to COVID-19. Many more infected. Uh, But it became political, just like everything else. We probably shouldn't be surprised because look at what what Maria, our guest, uh, talking about Russia just a half an hour ago. What did she talk about? She talked about in Russia. While there's many Russians who feel this is absolutely uh, the wrong move and criminal, what Putin has done to invade Russia or invade Ukraine, half of the country, just based on misinformation, thinks that they're liberators, that Ukraine is under some sort of, that they're Nazis uh, fighting and Nazis controlling the government of Ukraine and that they're liberating. They're eliminating a threat. Um. But I, I, I just can't get past the fact, and early on, it was clear that we were failing in this. And so much, the fact that we couldn't come together to defeat a virus, or at least control a virus better, uh, says a lot, sadly, about who we are as a people. And I'm not blaming one side on this. I think this, there's many, many other instances where people who, we're doing the right thing. We're a little overzealous in showing that they're doing the right thing. And I think that only exacerbated the problem. Uh, your text, 651-461-9226. Elizabeth is in St. Louis Park. Elizabeth, thanks for calling. When you think back on two years of pandemic, uh, what comes to mind? What will stand out uh, long after it's over? Uh, what you just said about it becoming political to this day, I don't understand how that happened. Um, 
uh, and I have an example of that from my own family. My father died of COVID last year. I'm sorry. And no, you, you know, I, I am too, because um, he, he should not, he was, he was 82. Uh, so I know he was older, obviously, but he had no other underlying conditions. Um, he died 12 days after he was diagnosed. Mm. It hit him that hard and that fast. And on his deathbed, he was then telling everyone who would listen, get vaccinated. He listened to whatever voice was telling him that vaccinations don't work. And he listened to it and he believed it and it cost him his life. And to this day, I have family members that still won't get vaccinated because they think that it's some kind of a government ploy. And how the hell? How? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand it. I just don't. And that's. And, and that. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Finish your thought. Nope. That's it. That's my thought. Well, my. I'm sorry for your loss, and I'm sorry that uh, you're having to deal with that. Thank you so much for sharing that too. And, and that's been a, a big point that we've raised many, many times on this show: is that unless it personally affects you, unless you have a relative or yourself gets very sick or dies of COVID that you would not change your mind. And there's an example of even after that happens, some still say that this is somehow uh, not what it appears to be. Um, Nick is in Roseville. Nick, thanks for, for holding. Your, your impressions when you think about uh, two years under a pandemic and what's going to last, what's going to stick in your mind uh, as we move Hi, forward? Well, well, first of all, I have to say my prayers are with Quentin. Thank you very much. Um, yep. Because I, I have seizures as well. So, um, so my prayers are with yeah, Quentin. Absolutely. Thank you, Nick. Yep. Chad's yeah. listening and uh, he appreciates, appreciates mm-hmm. it. Yep. But also I think that I don't think we'll ever fully be through this, but I think now that vaccinations are available that we can, cause I'm fully vaccinated. I think we could control this more. Personally, yeah. I don't think we'll ever be through this. I think COVID will be, you know. It'll be here, here to stay, forever. but we can get it to an endemic and uh, in a situation like we, where we have the flu, which will have milder yeah. cases and we'll be able to get a get a flu shot every year. Mm-hmm. And uh, Right, right. You know. I mean, as um, one of the health experts said during this, it looks like unless we vaccinate the air we breathe, we won't be able to uh you know, we'll just have to live with this. Now, having said that, I wish that those who could would get vaccinated. I know some blind friends, because I'm blind as well. I know some blind friends who refuse to get vaccinated because, ah, it's nothing. People get sick all the time. People die all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, um, what if I'm around you and I and you get COVID and then I get COVID? Don't you understand? It's, um, are you that stupid? I mean, you know. And they, of course, oh Nick, people get sick all the time. People, die, you know. And then there are people that, um, yep. and then there are people that you know don't care about offending people. Oh, it's all about the politics. Yep. No, and it's like, you know, I, I just have to say, there's this blind guy I know named Marvin who yep. doesn't mind offending people. He, I love bashing him every chance I get. Marvin Porter, if you're listening, I love this. Wow. Okay. I, I don't know where Nick was going with that. But, uh, but again, that's the thing, too. Uh, calling people stupid because they don't get the vaccine, that doesn't help either. That doesn't help either because it just pushes people further into their corners. I understand if you are questioning the vaccine. I understand if uh, you, the, whatever you read suggests otherwise that it isn't safe. I understand that my job is to try to convince you that it is safe and that it is effective and that it does help the greater good and community into overcoming this. But just yelling at each other and screaming at each other doesn't do any good either. But that's that's where we are. And to think we're a better people or a worse people because of it, I'm not so sure on that. You know, if we go back to 1918 and the Spanish flu and we have social media now where we can get any kind of news article we want to hear, it's probably the same situation. 247 News Talk 830 WCCO. Tim is in a car. We'll hold on, Tim, if uh, Tim can hang through the break. 
We've we'll got a bunch of texts coming in, too. We'll finish off the show getting your thoughts. Adam Carter in for Chad on WCCO. Your Lindis construction time check is 2.52. Time to see if our craftsmen should upgrade your home's insulation. Nearly a million Americans dead since the start of the pandemic. We did not come together. We turned it into a fight. That's why I think it's a failure. And it's not only a failure in the U.S., but uh, I think a lot of countries dealt with it. Uh, a texter suggests this. Regarding the pandemic, huge mistake worldwide was to call these vaccines. Because even though they technically are vaccines, they don't prevent getting the virus, as is the case with the polio vaccine. From the start, doctors should have called it a symptom reducer. Many more would have gotten the shot if it were labeled that way. That brings up a point about messaging that we have talked all the time about, about mixed messages from government entities. That has clearly been the case. Also points to the fact that it's a pandemic and things change, where we believe science, uh, what we're being told about uh, the results of early tests on this absolutely changed at some point. Um, could the government, could the CDC, could other agencies have been more uh, forthright, uh, more upcoming about those changes? Absolutely, 100%, yes. Yeah, the messaging was was kind of muddied. And this is the first time something like this has happened in a century, right? right. I mean, we could have, as a society, gone, you know what, we're going to cut these folks some bra- some slack here. Because we understand that we're learning as we go and that not everything's going to be perfect right out of the gate. So instead of when there's mixed messaging or when you know, up messaging gets updated, screaming conspiracy and pounding our fists and saying, no, right. this is the government trying to control my life, we could have said, yeah, okay, we're figuring this out as we get along. We're not right. going to get everything right out of the gate. And, you know, and, and all, again, work together. I think your point about not coming together and not working for the common good and instead, you know, it's me, it's all about my body, it's all about my rights – is the biggest failure in all of this. Yep. And no matter what the messaging was, no matter what we called the vaccine, that failure still exacerbated any other issue that was out there. Tim is in a car. He's been holding on through the break. Tim, thank you so much for hanging on. When you look back at the last two years, uh, what's going to stick with you about well, what's transpired? I, I think, Adam, just how gullible people are, how much stuff they will believe when all common sense, all medicine, all the greatest medical scholars um, have studied these things and looked at it, and people in any other situation we would have listened to. Uh, For instance, there's the line out there that the government inflated the COVID statistics by anybody who died. We're going to mark them down as having died from COVID, and we're going to give hospitals money to do it. Well, my 88-year-old father got COVID, and I'm proud to say he beat it. And so he was a documented case of COVID, and months later, he died of something else completely different. I'm sorry to And hear I that. had so many friends, thank you, I had so many friends tell me, yep, they're going to mark your dad, they're going to mark John down as dying of COVID. You watch, he had COVID, they're going to mark it. And I can tell you, Honestly, look, anybody right in the eye that his death certificate listed cause of death as end-stage colon cancer. Not one mention of COVID as a contributing factor as anything. And so somebody on some 24-7 biased platform mentioned that they're marking people down as having COVID who didn't have it. And all of a sudden, people who do lose a loved one have to put up with these endless questions about, you know, yeah. what did they put on his death certificate, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And it's just sad, sad that yep. people were that gullible. Tim, thanks for the call. My sympathies for losing your father. Not only uh, websites, uh, the leading <laughs> leading candidate of the Republican Party for governor right now was also one of those people suggesting that uh, doctors were forced to put COVID down uh, in certain cases. But there's a lot of people who believe him. And there's a reason why he's as popular as he is right now. Uh, Thanks so much for your calls and texts. Paul Douglas coming up next on News Talk 830 WCCO. Sure hope Chad is back tomorrow as we uh, got our usual Wednesday guests. I think he'll be talking to Mayor Jacob Fry tomorrow as well as uh, Dr. Osterholm, I presume, right, on a Wednesday? Dr. Osterholm will be in. We'll do playing politics as well. And... Uh, former WCCO afternoon show host Don oh, Shelby, very good, is going to join us tomorrow and talk a little bit about his recover recovery from strokes. Strokes, so, yeah. yeah. So I read that article about Don basically having learned how to speak again. 
Uh, love to hear from Shelby. 257 now, News Talk 830 WCCO. Thanks so much for listening. Stay tuned. Paul Douglas coming up next. Critics everywhere agree. Yes! The Lost City is a hilarious adventure. Oh, yeah! That is pretty awesome. Channing Tatum and Sandra Bullock are comedic gold. This is not a situation you can get out of by ripping your shirt off. That's debatable. The Lost City in theaters Friday. Rated PG-13. Hey, Chicago! Spring is almost here, and now's the perfect time to get a healthy, pest-controlled lawn with your local experts at True Green, America's number one lawn care company. True Green's science-based approach will help your lawn be thick and weed-free, guaranteed. Go to TrueGreen.com slash radio to save 50% on your first service. Just call 866-967-6048 or go to TrueGreen.com slash radio today and get a lawn to be proud of.